Hey, good morning, friends. Um, beautiful morning this morning. I'm a little bit later than normal. And on top of that, um, it was one of those days where I got my camera out of my backpack and it turned it on and it said, change your battery pack. So I almost didn't make this video this morning, but I promised a friend I would talk about something. And so I'm trying this with my phone. I don't normally do that, but here it goes. So, um, most mornings on Facebook, I post a picture of the sunrise and at the very end, I leave several taglines and I write, hold on to hope. I write, choose joy. I write, seek beauty. And I write, love deeply. And all of those, I think, are fairly self-explanatory, except for maybe seek beauty. Hold on to hope. We understand what that means. And those who hope in the Lord will ultimately never be disappointed. Ultimately. That doesn't mean we won't suffer disappointments. But if we continue to hold on to hope, ultimately we will triumph. So that's why I encourage people to hold on to hope. Choose joy. Again, that's kind of a catchphrase that's kind of common these days. But it's true. We can choose joy. We can choose to be joyful. We can choose to focus on the good in life rather than the bad. And we can choose our attitude. And so it's better to choose joy than to, oh, relax, Joel. Better to choose joy than to, um, you know, be in the pits of despair. Love deeply, obviously, um, Christian as Christians, we're to be marked by our love. And we need to love those around us to the best of our ability and bring honor and glory to Christ through that. What about seek beauty? Um, maybe that's not so obvious. I thought it was, but maybe it's not. Um, put simply, seeking beauty is a necessary reminder of God's glory and God's goodness. Let me try and explain that. I... Um, come almost every morning to look at the sunrise because as I see the sunrise I am reminded of God's goodness and his glory and I need that daily reminder I need that reminder as often as I can get it right because this world is full of ugly and it's full of hard things and we need to be reminded of God's goodness and his glory we need to be reminded that he is still on the throne and by experiencing beauty, we can be reminded of the person who created the beauty, if that makes sense. Also, if you think about Job, um, Job went through all that horrible, terrible, awful stuff. You talk about a no good, very bad day. That was Job, right? And God never really answers him why he goes through that. Instead, how does God answer him? And I want to be careful here. You always have to be careful when you paraphrase God. But basically what he says is, look at nature. Look at what I've created. And you doubt my goodness and my glory? Um, who are you to doubt me? I've created such beauty around you. And he reminds Job of his beauty. And Job ultimately falls down and says, you know, woe is me. I didn't know what I was talking about. Look, it's really important to seek. And see, the part about seeking beauty, it's easy for me to sleep in and skip seeing the sunrise. I have to actively go and seek it and find it and experience it in order to be reminded of God's goodness and His glory and His grace. I, I think it's really, really important. I, I think another part of this is I believe that being made in God's image, part of that is that we're to be people who are creators. Um, if you think about it, we're to be like Christ. And who, you know, this is kind of a trick question, but who was the creator? Everyone will say God, but really it was Jesus. Because in first in Colossians 1, it says, all things were made by him and through him, meaning Jesus. Um, Jesus is the creator. I mean, God is the creator through Jesus, but you know what I mean. Uh, Jesus was a major uh, contributing author, so to speak, of creation. And we are also to be people who are creators. And if you're a Christian artist, I would just encourage you, you're doing great work and keep at it and bring honor and glory to him through your work. Um, 
Jill's going nuts. She's anxious for her ball. Um, one thing that I want to caution, though, is sometimes when people seek beauty, they seek beauty for its own sake. And they begin to do what they talk about in Romans 1. They begin to worship the created rather than the creator. Whenever we see something beautiful, we need to take the next step. And namely, take the next step and reflect on God's goodness and glory rather than the goodness and glory of whatever it is we're experiencing. So if I'm eating a hot fudge sundae, right, I don't just stop with, oh man, this is good. I stop with, God, thank you for such an awesome ice cream sundae. Does that make sense? So be careful never to worship the created. Always worship the creator. Okay, listen, it's long enough. Um, I need to close this. Um, but let's be people who seek beauty. Have a great day. And remember, above all else, God is good all the time, everywhere.